my dear friends good afternoon and welcome to this celebration of the holy eucharist into this mass i continue to pray for all of you who have asked prayers i bring your consents to the almighty god let us also pray for those who have not asked but are in need that god may bless them at this time I pray for every one of us that we may recognize the activity of God in our lives and what God wants to do in our lives, that he may open our eyes to see that plan, even though it's not clear right now. I pray for our sick, I pray for God's healing. I pray for those who are stressed, especially people who have lost jobs, those whose jobs are in, in real danger right now, people who can barely provide a meal for their children and for their families, that God may do something miraculous in their lives right now, right here. I pray for all those who are sick from other ailments, pray for God's healing, pray for our dead, remember all those who have died at this time. May God grant them rest. Pray for our grieving families. May God bring them comfort, strength, and healing. And pray for the intentions that you have right now. We bring them up to the altar of God's grace. And pray that God may accept and bless them. Our opening hymn today is the summons. God summons us and invites us to be part of his ministry in the world. Let him leave our freedom. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my love be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and with me? Will you leave yourself behind if I get called you? For cruel and kind, and never be the same. Will you risk the hostile stare? Should your life a trap for scare? Will you let me answer prayers in you and to me? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends, to prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins, and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. That you may listen to the cries of your people, Lord, have mercy. That you may prepare our minds to trust you more, Christ, have mercy. That you may help us see our prayers answered and make us instruments to answer each other's prayers, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins. May he bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, let us feel your compassion more readily during these days of great trial, when by your gift we have known it more fully, so that those you have freed from the darkness of error may cling more firmly to the teachings of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, his Son, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, Get up and head south on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert road. So he got up and set out. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candans, that is, the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury, who had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, Go and join up with that chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, Do you understand what you're reading? He replied, How can I, unless someone instructs me? So he invited Philip to get in and sit with him. This was the scripture passage he was reading. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And as a lamb before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will tell of his posterity? For his life is taken from the earth. Then the eunuch said to Philip in reply, I beg you, about whom is a prophet saying this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with this scripture passage, he proclaimed Jesus to him. And they tra as they traveled along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, Look, there is water. What is to prevent me being baptized? Then he ordered the chariot to stop. And Philip and the eunuch both went down into the water. And he baptized him. When he came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip. And the eunuch saw him no more but continued on his way rejoicing. Philip came to Azotis, went about proclaiming the good news to all the towns until he reached Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the song is, let all the earth cry to God with joy. Let all the earth cry to God with joy. Blessed are God, you peoples, loudly sound his praise. He has given life to our souls and has not let our feet slip. Let all the earth cry, cry out to God with joy. Hear now all you who fear God, while I declare what he has done for me. When he appealed to him in words, when I appealed to him in words, praise was on the tip of my tongue. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Blessed be God who refused me not and who hears my prayers in his kindness. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you, with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel, according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert. 
and they die. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I'm sure there will be time for me to reflect on Jesus as the living bread. But this morning or this afternoon, I'd like to reflect on the first reading, our first reading from the Acts of Apostles. I'd like us to pay attention to what is happening here. Now, generally in life, when we hear say for instance of a reputable medical doctor who has done and succeeded in doing very very incredible things in medicine maybe successful surgeries and he's done them you know with the best skills possible we learn to trust such a doctor we feel comfortable in his presence we can trust our bodies to him or to her but, but knowing that he will do a good job because doing a good job is almost like his first nature not even his second nature it's almost like his first nature so we trust this doctor why why do we trust him or trust her because he has a reputation for doing the right thing almost every time getting it right almost all of the times it is the same thing that we do when we prefer one restaurant to another because this restaurant more often than not will do a good job if it's steak they will prefer the best steak whatever it is that they do they do it well so they get a reputation we trust them that each time we go there we are going to get something good and that's why we go back there that's also true for maybe a pilot who has had several miles in his belt or her belt and we know that this 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 uh, this uh, pilot, you know, has been, has had several awards. We can always trust them. Why do we trust them? We trust them because they have a reputation for doing what they do best, better than almost anyone else. That's why we trust them. And, and even in, in, in person, person to person relationships, we trust people because they show us more often than not that when they say something, they do it. When they make a promise, they keep it, you know, and their life is consistent. That means we can rely on them any number of times. Now, the, the, the problem I have, not just for you, but I'm sure you also have the same problem, but also for me at times, is when I see the world, and I see the world in its magnificence and beauty, and just even marvel, at who I am, created by the Almighty God. You are a masterpiece. I am a masterpiece. The world is a masterpiece. Ju just think about the complexity of just your eye alone. And, and think about how God was able to fashion every cell, every tissue to work together and do all that it does. Think about our ability to even hear sound and do all we do. Everything that God has done is a masterpiece. Think about even the birthing process. A man and a woman meet, a child is conceived, and that child is born and become. Just think about the entire process, how that works. God has demonstrated at every step that he is a masterpiece creator. He does it well all of the times. And yet we still struggle to trust him. We still struggle to believe his promises. That is counterintuitive because naturally we trust people who have a record. And God has a record to show in almost everything. Things that no one has ever done. Now, 
we, we trust scientists who, for instance, will build, will build a plane. All right, will build a plane, and yet the plane is modeled after God, what God created the bird. He, he created the bird, all right, doesn't need gas, doesn't have to buy fuel, it flies, it does everything, and can, several can fly for forever. And, and you think about, think about anything that we have been able to recreate, it's passion based on the master plan of God himself, whether it is uh, um, in, 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 mili in military, um, military lifestyle, our navy, all right, we do have all of these monster creatures on the sea, they are fashioned in the pattern of a will, okay, to do that job. So, so God is a master creator, and yet we find it so hard to trust him. Today I want us to see um, what Philip it, it would, would, would teach us, you know, about trusting God, knowing that God has a plan and he knows what he wants to do with us. Now, this Philip is not the disciple, not the, the apostle, not Philip the apostle. This is Philip the evangelist, and, and he has very important, um, important lessons for us. Hear what the Bible tells us. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, get up, head south on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert road. Now, when you hear that, that description, get up, head down south on the road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. Now, it's a desert road. This is not some safe road that you can just get up without arrangement, without preparations. Go do what? I'm sure if I heard this message, I'm like, go do what? I want to find out what you want me to go do. I, I, I want specific instructions and information because I don't just want to set out on some risky adventure without understanding and knowing what. You and I, would want God to give us specific, clear instructions and guide. We want to see everything clearly before we can come in, before we can trust. And yet, the Bible said, so he got up and set out. He did not ask questions. Now, why is that? Because he trusted. He trusted God that if he is sending me down this road, a desert road, now desert, you know what that means, what that represents. Is, is dry, is without no water. You may not see water. That's why I'm sure they were walk, They went for a long distance before they came by water. A desert road is normally barren. It's where there is scarcity, there is need, there is everything. And I'm sure this guy did not even have time to buy bread to say, okay, let me hold some bread in case I'm hungry. He was just off on his way. That is trust. That is someone who trusts. That if God is sending me here, he has already made provisions for me. I have nothing to worry about. I will just need to do what God wants me to do right now. And he goes on and he meets this Ethiopian. Now, you also realize that Ethiop an Ethiopian is not a Jew. He is an African. Now, we also understand how Jews would normally behave towards Africa, towards them. Towards, um, Gentiles at this time. So Philip goes and recognizes that the guy in this chariot is not a Jew. But he refuses to see what differentiates him. He is he looks different. He looks, he sounds different, speaks different. And yet that doesn't stop him. All he cares about, he cares about what he hears. He hears him trying to configure out. What God is saying. And he steps into that place. Being able to bridge boundaries. Being able to bridge differences. Being able to bridge everything that sometimes stops you and stops me. That's something else that Philip teaches us. When God sends you, don't see, don't look at who is on the other side. Don't see their color. Don't see their gender. Don't see anything else just look into their soul what is their soul crying for what is their soul testing for that is what philip was looking for and yet you and i very often are stopped by either how the person appears to me their color their accent 
we, we are stuck. We are distracted by everything else. Now, two things I want us to take from here. This Philip was an ordinary man like every one of us. He wasn't some extraordinary human being. He was ordinary. He has several key and essential um, aspects of faith that you and I are invited to think about and meditate first. Trust in God, especially at this time when nothing seems certain, nothing seems clear. The path for, forward doesn't look any clearer. It's misty. It's dark. Can I trust God that he knows that he has my back? Can I trust God? And secondly, that this man doesn't just believe, he is also witnessing. Can I be a source of hope and encouragement and calm and peace to someone else who is losing their mind? As a believer, can I be that sad instrument? Because that's what Philip was here for this eunuch. He was a source of guidance and light and hope. And he becomes, this Ethiopian becomes the first foreigner to embrace Christ. That we know in scripture, the first foreigner to embrace Christ. That we know in scripture. Why? Because of an ordinary human being. And Philip had already begun preaching and ministering, even in his own house. His house was a domestic church. If you go and read Acts of the Apostles, you read Acts 21, read verse 9. This man had four daughters that he had converted, who had become prophetesses, preaching and proclaiming God's word. So he was already a minister and evangelist in his own house. He trained himself to be a witness. Too often we preach, we don't witness. We are more compelling and more convincing when we witness and when we preach. When we preach, we more often than not, we more often than not undermine God's law when we begin to witness. And God can't wait for us to become witnesses of his love and not preachers of what we know. And we witness by how we treat people and how we make people see God through us and in us. And uh, as we go through the next several days, weeks, or months, let us trust God and let us witness our trust by how we live our lives and how we comport ourselves with everyone else who does not know God. So always I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God, that God loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Most merciful God, for the times we have struggled to trust you, for the times we doubted what your idea or your plans are in our lives, especially at this time, O oh God, for those of us still struggling to believe that you have some plan in all of this chaos, forgive us, O oh God, and help us to believe. And please increase our faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear God, at this time, the world is crying out for witnesses. It's crying out for people who can testify of your goodness and of your kindness. We beg you, dear God, that you transform us, that we may be instruments of witnessing, witnessing of your love, your presence, your power, but above all, of your ability to do the impossible. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our sick. Pray for those who are hungry. Pray for those who are dying. Pray for those who are homeless. Pray for those who are in prison. Pray for all those who are the rejected of society. Pray, Almighty God, that this experience will open our eyes to recognize what's important in this world. It is the life of the other person. His status, his standing, not his standing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for sinners. Pray especially for sinners who live alone and don't find people to visit, unable, people are unable to visit and provide them support at this time. 
that you, O oh Lord, may care for them until this moment is over. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have asked our prayers around this time, those celebrating their birthdays, their anniversaries, or the anniversaries of death of someone in their lives. We pray, Almighty God, that you may bless them. We pray that you may watch over them. We pray that you may give them many more years to celebrate. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And finally, I bring all your petitions and all your prayers before the Almighty God and ask that God who knows our needs, our hearts, who hears the cry from our hearts, may hear your cry. And from heaven, may grant you the blessing you're asking for. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear all of these concerns we have brought before you. Hear all the others we carry every day in our hearts. And please accept and grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, which will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, the Lord yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is reborn and renewed, and the integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are playing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may marry to the co heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence using the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of God's peace. From me to all of you and your families, May peace abide with you. May God's peace be with you and rest with you now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you will take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him, our bread of life. He takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Dear God, today you remind us that you are the bread of life. That anyone who eats you will live forever. We beg, Almighty God, that as your sons and daughters are unable to receive you physically today, that they may receive you spiritually, and the effects would be no less than they should have received. May your presence in your hearts well up as a fountain of life, a fountain of hope, a fountain, Almighty God, of calm and peace at this time of great trouble. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. 
graciously be present to your people, we pray, O oh Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to express my thanks again to all of you for joining us at this Holy Mass. I pray that God may help increase our faith and our trust in Him because we need that now more than ever. And as always, if you forget everything I said, if you forget everything I said today, don't forget this, that you are the delight of the Almighty God. Believe it. You are the delight of the Almighty God. That God loves you to death. He died for you. He loves you to death. So always, let us rise and ask God's blessings. May God watch over you. May God bless you. May God protect you. May God keep you safe. May God provide for all of your needs. Above all, may God show you how much his love for you is unfathomable. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Through the prayers of our Blessed Mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our closing hymn, we will sing a song to our Blessed Mother. We will sing Immaculate Mary, thy praises will sing. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, ave. Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria, in heaven the blessed thy glory proclaim, on earth we your children invoke your fame. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave Maria.